My name is Matthew Schmidt, and I'm um, in my um, seventh year of, of graduate school here at the U of A. I'm in the um, neuroscience program, and I work with Dr. Haijan Kai. So my research focuses on understanding how eating is controlled in the brain, focusing on the emotional center of the brain and kind of the output side of uh, eating control, rather than more likely being sensing when you're hungry, controlling when you eat is more um, what my research focuses on. And I use a technique called in vivo calcium imaging, which lets me directly observe neurons while a mouse is freely behaving. And um, I, I use that to study a subtype of neurons that seem to be involved in controlling food intake. Nice. So that's, and... that's, that's, that's a research spiel. Um, yeah. I, I, I also do um, a bunch of other stuff. I've done a bunch of outreach and mentorship stuff at the U of A. So um, I work with I've worked with the UBERP program a couple of times, and I've been their outstanding mentor. I guess I'll just go through my CV so I sound yeah, go for it <laughs> like I like I deserve uh, mm -hmm. whatever award I got. Um, I work with so people are like, who is this guy? <laughs> who, 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 who's this dude? But um, I also work with uh, a project with Stephen, Dr. Stephen Cowan, um, called um, Be the Brain, where we um, have a jello brain that kids can poke electrodes in and it has sensors attached to it. So the neuron responds to sensory stimuli. So the kids can do an actual, basically an actual neuroscience electrophysiology experiment um, in, in like third, in like two minutes. And I can get them to do real science in two yeah. minutes. That's a lot of fun. And I'm also, um, I also lead a folk dance group in town. Um, the, the, the Lyconic Polish Folk Ensemble and um yeah that's just basically a lot of what i do that's a, that's so much <laughs> that's uh, a huge amount of things how did you um get interested in neuroscience and and cognitive science i guess like why was that the path that you were like this is what i want to study yeah sure actually no it's funny you mentioned it. i actually did go to the U of A for my undergraduate program and i was in the nscs program so okay. um but I, te technically i'm now in just neuroscience but and when I originally, when I got into the, when I went, got to the UVA, there was a new major. I was in actually the first and second class, kind of halfway between the two of the major existing. And um, I was, I liked psychology, but I was good at chemistry. Interesting. I was good at math. I was yeah. good at hard science stuff, but I also wanted to understand how the brain works. So it kind of pushed me into neuroscience. And now I, I did a bunch of work with um, Dr. Lee Ryan in neuro, human neuroimaging and then I worked with Stephen Cowan for a while, learning analysis, and now I'm working with um, this, trying to approach the brain from a information processing standpoint. That's the interesting thing. How is the brain organized in, how does that structure and information flow lead, how does that lead to behavior? This is Ufuk. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he is What's up, a buddy? cat, he's also, and he was named after little dumplings called Ufka, like his ears. Oh, they also mean, I, the dumpling name also means ears. So it's a, it's a good name for him. That's perfect. Yeah. And that's actually the, like the first thing I noticed about like the second thing when he looked in my direction, I was like, oh, his ears are little, little cat ears. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were chewed yeah. when he was a kitten. So they make him itch a lot, but it's okay. Oh, make buddy. Him cute in all the photos. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad we addressed that. Cause I was like, I have to talk about the cat next, but yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that's awesome. That's again, so much and kind of a nice, I, I feel like I rarely hear about a student who like wants to go into like psychology and then has a predilection for like the for STEM. Um, I feel like usually it's like I wanted to do biology, but then I found out like I'm good at English or something like that. So that's kind of cool to hear about. Um, yeah, the, the other way around. Yeah, a lot, a, lot, a lot of biologists are scared of math, but a lot of great biologists are incredible at math and we need both to, to figure it out. Yeah, you need people with strength, like different strengths in the same discipline, I think. Exactly. Um, and how did you hear about, like, find out about the ARCS Foundation? Like, yeah. You know, how so, did that, um, yeah, yeah. I actually found out from a friend of mine who was, it was an MD, PhD. And the, yeah, I found out through um, her and it was kind of like um, a, a group of people who have enough money to support um, um, students and instead of going out and buying a sports car, they support science and that's really um amazing a lot of them have like stories and history about like oh i went through this and this and this or like my sponsor for example i actually haven't gotten to um, meet him but i looked him up um he, he was he kind of something you can support the scholarship and kind of still be pretty private 
And his mom was a huge supporter of the arts. And when we went to the banquet, I got to um, meet one of her friends. And so I found out the history of the family's support for science through the Phoenix science musician. Um, blah, 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 science yeah. Music, um, um, I found out through that. So yeah, I, I basically I found out from a friend who told me how incredible it was that they directly supported the students. And so I decided to apply. Yeah, and what's the uh, what was the application process like? Like, is it like applying for a oh, grant? It goes uh, back there pretty far. We had to have a, a letter of rec from a faculty member, and a lot of this talking about your career goals, talking about your undergraduate and graduate goals, and about how your research will impact. It's like um, five different essays, kind of, but they're fairly they're fairly small. It's like current describe your current research. Mm -hmm. and um, academic milestones that are remaining and it's, it's, a, it's a pretty standard application honestly so any if anyone wants to reach out and do it I highly recommend um, that anyone go out and um, do it the only problem would be the pressure like these are the people that are um, ostensibly funding me but they're really they're really nice they're, they're yeah. really, really, really pretty nice I mean, they're, they're hoping to find someone to like support, I guess. So it's not, you know, exactly. as much exactly. of a tryout. Yes, it's not a tryout. They, they, they're supporting you already. They want, they want to feel happy that you're happy. And if you're in, then it, it, it works, it works out um, quite, it works out quite well. Yeah, I just kind of described my research and um, focused on a little bit about, um, so the people who are reviewing the arts scholarship, there are they're not necessarily scientists a lot of them are scientists who ended up with a lot of financial success mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are just people who wanted to support science so you kind of have to make sure that you're um when you're writing it you're accessible to everybody in your scientific writing which is honestly a goal that everyone should be striving for anyway right yeah. in in their scientific writing so um, you want to kind of aim for what would someone who a lay person or a committee of lay-ish people who've also spent a lot of time reading these papers could mm -hmm. understand and appreciate yeah so yeah. i rambled a bit there is that does that, that hit what you're trying to get at Was yeah that no that that hits it exactly actually and it has like a, a few good like pieces of advice that aren't just like you know fill out the application it's also yeah. you know like you're going to have to network a little bit um and you are going to have to write for people who aren't maybe specifically in your discipline um right which is a good goal like yeah and your poster is going to have to be um, built for people who aren't necessarily in your discipline as well which is which is kind of fun like going back to the the folk dance experience my i when we present our dances we're sharing it with um, people who have no idea what folk dance in poland looks like right so you have to make it very accessible but you can also make it very friendly and open and people get really excited if you just have that attitude and then you can sucker them into learning about something afterwards. Yeah, like act like this is so cool, you'll want to learn about it. And they probably will. They probably will, exactly. Yeah. It, it's really nice. Um, yeah, so what role do posters have in the app? Like, is that like part of the application or is that like once it's you're done and at part the gala? Of the yeah. Once you become part of the ARC scholarship, because it's such a prestigious organization, the graduate college gets real serious with you. <laughs> They're like, all right, here's your templates. You're taking a professional photo. Don't insult anybody. Don't insult anybody. It's like, oh, okay. They get they're they're very they're very serious about it because yeah. the art foundation has a lot of funding to throw around. So yeah. you don't want to you don't want you don't want to mess that up for them. <laughs> yeah, they said don't insult somebody twice. So that means somebody yeah. has some for some somebody reason. Has somewhere, that. right? Yeah. So uh, it's just, um, you know, it's just that's part of the part of the, the spiel but um once you once you're in and they you go to the banquet they you you have to present the poster at the banquet and that's okay. that and they actually give you a template for it with like official letter kind of you know how you get official letterhead for the U of A. this is official poster head i guess for the art scholarship okay got it and once you're at the banquet, like, do you meet the other people who won? And like, is there any like, do they facilitate like interaction between you at all, or is we it just like you all made it? That there's an initial meeting for all U of A winners, and then at the banquet, um, we kind of hang out by our posters, but you're also you also go around and you talk to other people um, at the poster. Actually, like for example, I ran into a guy doing optical sciences, and I see him citing my mom's work in optics. So we got Holy to shit. talk about that, <laughs> and that was very funny. 
And I got to send, a, I got to send my mom a picture of the poster and he strategically stood in front of a lot of the information so he couldn't be judged as a good call. Smart. Good call by that guy. Smart, smart did, move. Did he tell you that he was doing it or was it afterwards once no. you looked at it, you were like, oh, that was good. <laughs> I, I, I noticed the feel and I was like, hold on, you're doing a parametry. Let me look at, there's a citation, that's Schmidt. Right there. That's why I can't. That's why I can't have an algorithm named after me. It's my mom's fault. <laughs> Did it seem encouraged? Like, hey, we're gonna let you get to know each other in a way that's like you might be working together somehow, or like this is an interesting collaboration thing, or is it more like, hey, you get to meet the other cool people who won this award? Um, within this award, it's less. In in my experience, there is less about the collaboration, more about meeting other people in fields in similar kind of fields and it what it would build towards is longer term collaboration longer term connections these are the people that the this foundation is supporting so because of that support they're more likely to be able to go farther in their career so you've got a more concentrated pool of, of small connections and like later on in a career especially through the newsletters you might run to someone who also was sponsored by the arts foundation you think oh hey that's an immediate professional um, connection there. Other people do make connections there. I didn't, uh, I was the only person, well, actually I did meet someone from um, ASU and I and I did like write down their name to start to make a connection. I haven't gotten to follow up on that yet, but uh, it's it's there. It's definitely, you, you definitely can walk into there and make connections. I didn't get yeah. it time, but. Yeah, but it's, you know, like you're going to have that like kind of, line on your cv or whatever forever so you can always be like oh hey you were also an art scholar instant connection exactly. do you want to talk about this thing and also i know you're pretty like you have the chops and whatever your discipline is because exactly. you are this thing it's a professional network and also if you have the art scholar um, word on there the a lot of people who would control a faculty position or job position may have contributed to the art scholarship and the, the arts foundation they'll see that name on there and that would that would help you as well. But I did want to ask um, about uh, since maybe like in the actual um, like award ceremony, interdisciplinary collaboration wasn't super encouraged. But I did want to ask like if that had been a part of your academic career at all, um, yeah. and if so, like how? Yeah. So um, in my academic career, um, I have always been fairly. Um, I do try to think of things in a very interdisciplinary way, and um, I guess. Part of my spiel is that interdisciplinary is almost the wrong way to think about inter being interdisciplinary, right? It's not like I have gone out and found, talked to a physicist once, right? Yeah. Well, I have this problem in my field. I need to, it's, I need to solve something about the brain. I need to understand something different about the brain. Let's go reach out and find the people who can help us with that. So, for example, um, um, one of the ones that one of the one of the successful ones that um, collaborations that we've done is with the math department that I've done personally. I took a class in computational neuroscience with a, I believe, former faculty. I don't know if he's still around, Calvin Zeng. And through his class, I actually built a toy model of the part of the brain that we're working on. My professor doesn't have a background in math. Um, I have a background in programming. So I was kind of a bridge between the biology and the math. And together, working with Calvin, we built a, we took that toy model that I started with and Calvin um, built it up into a um, full model of the brain and combined it with some of my biology, um, um, the actual data. When you have a mathematical model, you want it to behave like the biology predicts, shows that it behaves, right? And then you build, you start that over. When you're doing a yeah. model in neuroscience, it should um, reflect what the biology shows and then predict something beyond it. So we took the biological information about how the system behaves, that activating certain neurons inhibits food intake, and we use it to predict what the underlying structure should be that we couldn't access directly with biological tools. So that's one thing that I did um, interdisciplinary. I also worked with Dr. Um, Philip Guterov's lab, and we're currently, um, I, I helped them with um, the biology and the actual implanting of wireless neural manipulation devices. So usually when we're, yeah, so three steps back. In, with We can do two cool things with neurons recently. We can control them directly with light. There's new um, protein technology called optogenetics that lets us express these 
um, channels and pumps that we hijacked from bacteria, and put them into neurons, and those are light-sensitive proteins that you can shine a laser in there, and you can turn on or off certain parts of the brain, depending on where you inject the virus and a bunch of other really cool tools. Another thing that we can do is there's a, another cool protein called a, a, a calcium-dependent fluorescent protein, which, turn, which every time a neuron fires, it allows the neuron to fluoresce, and it'll convert the electrical signal into an optical signal that you can then also observe. And the Phillips lab helps us do both, in vivo photometry and in vivo optogenetics. So working with him, um, we can make lep and mice work move more freely, and we can also both image in one region, and then our current project is to image in one region and manipulate another one to um, look at those neural connections I was talking about, look at how projection from one area to another affect the activity in another area and directly observe it rather than using behavior to inference what might be going on there. Got it. So yeah, that's another collaboration. I had a third collaboration with the Toxopath Plasma Lab, but um, that one didn't go anywhere yet. But yeah, we do, we do a lot of interdisciplinary stuff. Yeah, that's wild. Oh my God. Just... Uh... The things that neurons can do, insane. Did you mention any of like the collaborations in your applications or was it, were you like yeah, into your discipline? I yeah. I mentioned all three of those. What do you hope the next stage um, will be for you and your research? Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll frame it first in a, in a career sense and then I'll frame it in the research sense, I suppose. Um, I, my, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy doing the research. I enjoy the mentorship. A lot of, it seems sometimes it's cliche I'm in grad school because I want to go be, um, do basically what the professors end up doing. And a lot of, nowadays, a lot of people don't do that. But I feel like given those interests, I'm going to aim for that. And both me and my wife's family, they're here in town. So we'd like to come back to the U of A. Actually, mm -hmm. That's going to be difficult with an academic trajectory. But that is, that's the goal. We'll see how it goes. Um, in terms of research, I'm really liking the, I mean, I'm going to definitely keep doing things in an interdisciplinary sense, especially because um, I'd like to do more computational thinking. Um, if you think about the new AI models, those are deep learning models, and those are um, built off of cortical networks, essentially, right? Deep learning models are cortical, but we don't think very much about how emotional processing is done and how the computation actually goes on in the emotional parts of the brain. So I might want to continue pursuing understanding those a bit better because rather than... Um, basically on um, the cortical pattern completion kind of stuff you get a little bit of it and the connections are strong enough that they reactivate the rest of it like memory uh and emotional processing is more like heuristic processing more like i'm going to modulate this whole thing so you don't i'm going to change your entire behavior so you don't die in this context so i'm curious yeah. about that a bit more and continuing to pursue kind of the information processing part of the brain and doing more looking at more neural populations at once. So I think that's kind of what I want to aim towards is understanding the emotional part of the brain in a much more computational way. I think that's going to be my goal, but we'll see when what happens when I publish something. Yeah, you never know. But that sounds like, I mean, that's a good goal that is going to be like, that'll keep you busy. Yeah, um, it's like you, you got to have sure. big goals to put on the grants, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then shoot for them. Um, yeah. And yeah, are there any, I guess, it pretty much brings me to like my last two questions. Uh, is there any advice that you would give to like a potential applicant who like read this article, thought like, oh, what a cool foundation I would like to apply? Um, anything we haven't talked about already, basically. Um, well, start early. Um, make sure that you're coherent through your entire piece, not just one essay to another. Make sure you read all the essays and realize what they're getting at underneath and then present a whole person rather than five essays. Mm -hmm. And just kind of make sure that you do talk about outreach and the human stuff that you do that isn't just um, the research. Yeah. They're, they're looking for a person too.